In today's episode, we're talking about feng shui and what to do if you have friends, family members, or others that laugh at, criticize, or think feng shui is all nonsense. Hi there, I'm Ken Lauer and welcome to Ken Lauer TV. This is all about feng shui and intuitive advice that works to bring more money into your life, attract the kind of relationship that's actually perfect for you, gain rapid advancement in your career, and just get unstuck. And today, we're talking about what others think, say, or believe about feng shui. This is one topic that's really near and dear to my heart. I personally love feng shui and all the benefits that it can provide. However, for me, it's so much more than that. Let me share a quick story with you. Now, I was originally born and raised in the Midwest. Now, as you can tell, I'm not Asian. I didn't grow up with feng shui principles being used in the home, nor did I have any experience with the Asian cultures or studies. For some reason though, I was always interested in the space and, and really enjoyed looking at the interiors and how it can work with people and how they experience them and how that makes you feel. I thought at one point that if I did my college studies all over again, I would have been an architect. So I moved to New York City. I was a stockbroker. I did well. I was an entrepreneur. Long story short, the finance career, it ran its course. I started my own company and was consulting for others. Although I was doing some things that I enjoyed, I stopped doing many of the things that I loved, like traveling, spending time with friends and family, skiing, playing tennis, being outdoors, and just being active. And then it happened. I was mugged at gunpoint. At that brief second, when you're staring at the barrel of a gun pointed at your face, for me it felt as though the blood drained to my feet and I turned ghost white. In the end, everything turned out okay. I got roughed up a little bit and I gave up my wallet with $7 in it. But what I didn't expect that happened was what happened after that. I found myself having severe anxiety, not wanting to leave my apartment for days and being fearful to even go out to dinner with friends or family and all my confidence seemed to just leave me. I was losing touch with myself and I knew I needed balance. I had a couple feng shui books and I started to research thinking that feng shui was going to be my answer. Keep in mind that I'd started going to therapy, but for me it didn't seem like a solution. The therapist said that I needed medication or that she couldn't help me. And I just didn't think that was the right answer for me at that time which she ended up firing me as a client because she felt like she could not help me without medication. So after reading some books and articles online, I started taking action. I still remember trying to feng shui my living room and dining room. I'd do a couple things, feel good about it, do some more research, and learn that everything that I'd just done was all wrong. And then I would try to do it another way. But instead of reducing my anxiety and stress, it was actually increasing it. I found my thoughts in a spin cycle continuing to build up speed but paralyzing my action and not getting any relief. At that moment, I decided I needed to learn feng shui. So I dedicated the next three plus years of my life traveling around and learning from true masters. And I learned things that I didn't even think were possible. My anxiety went completely away. I started being social again and just plain happy. I started doing the things that I loved like playing tennis and skiing again but also really started to challenge myself in fun and new ways like spending a week with skiing with Olympians and professionally sponsored skiers or, you know, hitting massive jumps and landing in these huge airbags. I've also taken my physical exercise to the next level and my relationships have truly blossomed. And I can now say I truly live a rich life. It's more richer not only in terms of money, but in terms of love and happiness and abundance and balance. I love who I am and what I can share with the world. So I know firsthand that feng shui has not only helped me, but potentially even saved my life. So am I a believer? Absolutely. Then others wanted to know how they could create positive changes in their life, and they started getting some amazing results. And here I am today. So what I do, and what I personally say to those that don't believe, I say to them, sounds good. Understand this, feng shui is one of the many tools that can help you return to your true self. Each tool resonates with each person in a different way. For me, it was and is feng shui, and for my clients that get real results that matter most to them. 
My job is not to convince people of what feng shui is or isn't, or to debate or to convince them. For those that it resonates with, I'm more than happy to share and discuss and guide. And for those that are not interested, I'm completely okay with that as well. If I'm working with a client and we go to a business, I ask them if they've shared who I am or what I do. If not, I'm completely fine with saying I'm a friend or some type of consultant, but I don't need to have the title of feng shui in it. The spaces I consult for feel balanced, abundant, and those don't know I have been there all say that the energy feels different, that it's really comfortable, and that they really enjoy being in the space. So you see, others won't necessarily know that the space has been feng shui. Only to a trained master or expert would they know. Everyone else just thinks it feels great, and as a result, productivity increases, turnover decreases, revenues and profits go up, and then people start to feel empowered and more confident, and then the positive momentum of accomplishment really begins to kick in and takes everyone to new levels. If I'm consulting for a home, many of my clients have friends and social gatherings at their house. And I advise them not to tell others that it's for feng shui, but that if someone asks, you just tell them it's decoration or that you liked a certain item and that's why you have it. Once you say it's for feng shui, you're opening up a whole can of worms with lots of questions that you might not be able to answer. Or then comes the judgment from others and dismissal because they don't know, don't understand, or don't care to. And it's easier to dismiss or judge than to understand. Again, I don't believe in feng shui trinkets and having ducks in the relationship area or having lucky tassels hanging from every door or fake gold boats sitting around. My suggestions are implemented with the space and occupants in mind so it blends in with their style and adds real value to the experience of the space. If you have all these trinkets around, a couple things are going to happen. One is that you're probably frustrated that you're not getting the real results that it said they would track. Two, you get upset the amount of money that you spent. And three, you're getting some real comments from others about what is going on and why do you have all these random looking things all over your house. Keep in mind that feng shui is all about understanding patterns and a certain theme. Certain patterns can provide insight into what you're experiencing or what you will experience. You can activate the patterns that are working for you and remove those patterns that are not or will not work for you. And then some amazing coincidences start to happen. A person feels a real shift in the energy of their space. They get their second win and they start taking real action. They start to experience positive things happening in their life and they just feel good and happy. And with continued progress comes continued results. As I tell others, coincidence, I don't know. But what I can tell you is that my clients won't go back to the way it was. But I know that for the last 10 plus years of helping others get real results in the areas of their life that matter most to them, it's not coincidence that there are real benefits to feng shui and it can help you return to your true self. So if you find some tips of value that you would like to implement, just give it a try and see how it feels. If it feels good, then great. If not, then you can always go back to the way it was. But don't feel like you have to convince your significant other or family members or friends of what you're doing or why you're doing it nor do you have to try and convince or defend it. Your goal is to create a positive environment where you feel healthy and comfortable in, a space that will nurture and support your goals and a space that you love, that makes you feel fabulous and beautiful and loved and at peace. So take some small steps along the way. Focus on your goals and achieving them rather than defending the vehicle that will get you there. So with all that said, that's what I have for you today. If you like this video, then share it with your friends. Or if you know someone that's going through a tough time, be a friend and share this with them. It may be just what they needed to help them get unstuck and move forward in their life and their goals that they want to reach. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you tried implementing feng shui? If so, what have you done? And did you experience anything? Let me know and share it in the comments below. As always, the best discussion happens after the episode at KenLauer.com. So head on over there now and leave a comment. Also, if you want a feng shui and intuitive advice that works, enter your name and email address to receive more great tips that you can take action with. Keep focused on your goals and take action so that you can share your greatness and your beauty with the world. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Kinlauer TV where you can discover how feng shui transforms your life.